Harold, I'm afraid I need you to come with me. Oh, hi, Major. What's the matter? Is that leak bothering you again? It's your fine, your unpaid fine. I had a fine? You still do. Tubing without the proper credit on your tube card. Can you settle it now? Uh, no. But wait, I I'm sure I topped it up. Improper tube card management, Halibut. You surely recall that since last week, the Energy District tubes require your tube card to be topped up with blue credit. If an onward journey to the social district is intended, in addition to the usual weekly turquoise credit. Wait, but only last month it was a green. I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Now let's get you over to the fine secretary so we can all get on with our day. fell foul of the end-user insufficient funds clause. I'm afraid if you really can't pay, you're going to have to think of someone who can. I guess that means you'll have to wait for the professor again. Who knows what she sees in you? Right, I'm needed elsewhere. There's a disturbing rise in the number of people traveling without the appropriate tickets recently. I hope for both our sakes not to see you again soon, Harold. Then, in 13,768 enjoyed our first instantly iconic ad campaign, Got Water. Can't you just put this on my account? I'll pay as soon as I... Mr. Halibut, you don't have an account. Not since we blocked it. Please, Mr. Secretary, let me just... I mean, look, can't we... <laughs> Your name is Mr. Secretary? <laughs> uh, my, my title, young man, is All Water Secretary number 24. It is not my name. Anyway, I'm afraid all Water Corporation can't be seen to make exceptions. You'll have to go through the proxy payment process like everyone else. Mr. Halibut, do you really want to incur the fine for resisting the proxy payment procedure and temporary confinement protocol? The other fine? Okay, no more fines, sorry. There were the dark times, and slowly but surely, light returned to the Fedora. A light held aloft by the hands of all Water Corporation. So, what are you in for? Oh, I'm just here for the great company. Aren't you a little young to start working for all water? What? No, I meant because it was a joke, doofus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Could you let me wait in peace now? Oh, sure. We'll do. Have fun. Felix? Hi, Ma. Uh, look, before you say anything... Whatever your excuse is, it'll have to wait. Busy, busy times. Mr. Secretary, please charge whatever Felix's fine is to the company tab, please. Of course, Mrs. Van Der Vaart. Have a pleasant day. You too, Master Van Der Vaart. Freedom! Have fun, Harold! We reluctantly interrupt your daily business for an important, <laughs> for some important information for all inhabitants of the Fedora One. Dear people, crew, and company, we seem to have discovered something super cool. Please do consider to congregate tonight at the Agora Theatre to for some important information. Oh, Harold, here you are. I've been looking all over. Get your buns to the lab, if you please. I do beg your pardon, ma'am, but there is still the matter of an outstanding fine for Mr. Halibut to find a proxy for. A completely reasonably priced and fairly applied fine, if I do say so myself. Sir, please do not cause me further consternation. Just put it on my tab as always. Come on, Harold. Reflecting our continued commitment to being approachable and accountable, Mr. Halibut, you'll need this before you go. A ticket home? Yes, and only home. It's not valid for any other routes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And your tube pass should be unlocked again within 24 hours. So you'll be back to the luxury of fully automatic tube travel eligibility approval once again. I can't wait. 
was a corporation which illuminated the many innovations we now rely on. Every time I need you, Harold, it's something else. What's wrong with you? I can't handle your shenanigans while we're in the middle of this mess. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Next time... This must have an underlying cause. Hmm. I remember when you were still in school and your teacher telling me about how you would just stare out of the window, oblivious to her even shouting at you. It's like you've never snapped out of that daydream. I was never in a daydream, just... the other stuff was boring. Harold, I'm not sure which is worse. The idea of you living with your head in the clouds or never being excited by life. Only boring people get bored. I'm sorry, Professor. your permission slip and you know it destination chosen we hope you enjoy your all water tube system journey you have arrived is the please exit the tube in an orderly manner temporarily we hope you travel with us again soon but why isn't the line active what needs improving a man has a right to know i don't decision-making process that led to this, sir. But I assure you, it will be for the good of your... Destination decided. Enjoy the view. But Harold, I'm tired of chasing after you like you're a stupid butterfly. Hang on. What's a butterfly? That sounds silly. A butterfly is an insect from Earth. They had beautiful patterns on their wings and drank pollen from flowers. I suppose you could say they often appeared in, uh, extra natural moments in life. On the other hand, they were terribly inefficient, flighty, overly trusting and delicate. Ergo, you never take responsibility and I never know where to find you next. I know I drift off a bit sometimes, but but all water raised the tube fares again, and they never announce it properly. This time it really was an honest mistake. Plus, there was this woman who... Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. There's important work afoot. Oh, yeah. Have you checked the blockage in the filter station yet? And did you need to feed the fish, too? Ah, yes. Those two. I'm on the case. Bye, Professor. <sighs> Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, uh, I'm sure those are all my tasks for the day. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. It really is a wonder you get anything done around here. Ah, thanks, Professor. It's got a life of its own. Strangely enough, I noticed you hadn't added your daily task list to it, and I don't want to have to remind you about them again. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Uh, so, I access the list... It'll come back to me. Just go to the four selection buttons. Okay. Um, where were they again? The upper right of the pad. Ah, uh, yeah. Top of the four buttons, right? Cool. Then I use the navigation nub to highlight and then hit the bottom button. Precisely. Okay, great. And it's the rightmost button to go back, right? Indeed, and I'll see you at the Agora.
morning, Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. Do you remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now, activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. The rock you want is in the container on the lower right. If you remember your left and right, bring it to the microscope and insert it into the hatch. Check the microscope, and finally, you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one for... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out, and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Hey. Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no. I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. Oh, goodness, you're Microwave Boy. So, you do remember me. Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you... I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Reserves? Are we in some kind of trouble? Now I've said too much. Ask Moreau. Perhaps she'll tell you more. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him, which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. See you later. Bye, Richard. So... Dare I ask, what is it? So... Bridget told me about some kind of energy shortage, and to ask you about it. Any idea what she meant? Hmm. Yes, she mentioned she may have found a link between something in the water and our solar wind problem. It's speculative, and now isn't the time. That all? Um, what needs doing again? Harold, use the PDA! 
Anything else on your mind? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be off. Be good, Harold. Harold, when you see Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay. I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, uh, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye, especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... <laughs> don't mind me, Harold. I just mean... Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold... No, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. Exit the tube. Utterly Thank unconcerned you for your own safety. No respect for authority. Wanton disregard today. for the future of humanity. Harold! Good timing. You can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold? Come here and explain things. And yourself. Major? I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive. I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold? Tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major. I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me. Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that, unless you're in league with him? I just meant, I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but, but, uh, what did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it. Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And good luck finding them. Oh no, Felix, have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, 
Do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But, Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we, there's no... Come on, spit it out, man! Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix! Where is Felix? Oh, no. Felix? Harold, you've lost him! Ugh. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary 24, of course. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed up. There are just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Okay, sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly all-water raffle bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from all water to you, the citizens of Fedora. What are the prizes? Well, there's a long list of luxuries, a plethora of pleasurable prizes. The full list can be perused at your leisure on the All Water Public Access Forum. Okay, I'm ready. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. Hey, Professor. Oh, are those the new teacups? Come and see for yourself. Oh, I promise I ordered them. Harold, just look. Lightkeepers could get the rock, and they knew we wanted it. That means that, uh, they must be someone who... Harold, it's late, and we've had enough excitement for one day. Let's leave the theories until tomorrow. Sure. I'm just happy that whoever they are, they're on our side. So it seems for now. Good night, Harold. See you in the morning. Okay. Night, Professor. Whoever made that leak must be feeling pretty terrible right now. 
I'm glad it wasn't me messing up for once. Let's see what tomorrow brings. And what time do you call this? Uh, good morning, Professor. The time is... I know what the time is. There's lots to be done. How are we going to find out who the Light Keepers are? I'm just as curious as you, Harold, but we have better things to do. I suppose you're right. How can I help? You can start by taking the rope to Bridget. She'll make the necessary preparations for analysis, which you should be able to handle. Okay, great. I'll get right on it. And Harold? Try to remember that whoever the Light Keepers are, our jobs here are to make life more stable for the people here, not less. I know. I know. I'll get going. Hi, Bridget. Are you ready to rock, Harold? I have it here. Ready with rock. Oh, Harold, you can be such a killjoy sometimes. Anyway, it's going to take a while to analyze this little guy, so I'll send for you when it's ready. Oh, okay, great. Thanks, Bridget. Oh, Harold, while you're here, maybe you could help me with a little something? Uh, maybe, but don't you think... Now, now, you'll do quite well. There's a little experiment I've been wanting to run. The remote control of the conveyors isn't working right now. My theory is Cyrus and his mugs of tea that he always forgets about before knocking over. So I need your help to manually control them. Can do. I'll be in here recording and analyzing the data. Right, see that button over there? The big one next to the conveyors starts and stops them. I think I can handle that. Yes, well, don't get cocky. I'll give you more detailed instructions over the loudspeakers as we go along. There are three different types of organisms on the conveyor. Each is a different color. Are they pretty? See, don't I make life easy for you? But I want you to focus on the red ones for now, since we're comparing their data to past readings. Red ones. I got them. I'd be worried if you didn't. Anyway, pop them under the green machine next to you and stop the conveyor, please. Okay, great. On to the next step. Now, you see the analysis machine? Go start it up. The machine's UI is pretty easy. There are just two buttons. One to chop the sample, and one to coat it in our lovely space bacteria mix. Chop and coat. I see. Right. I'll be prepping the actual data recording in the meantime. I'll let you know exactly when to start the process. Wait for my command. Just like comedy, timing is everything here. Now. <laughs> Great. Time to coat the sample. Okay, great. Now show me what you got. Hmm, intriguing. Okay, we need two more readings to have a representative data set. Nice 
one. Now, on to the next step. Now! Great! Time to coat the sample. Nice! Let's see what we have. Ah, I see. I see. Just the one left now. Okay, great. On to the next step. Harold, what did I tell you about timing? The sample will be useless to us now. You'll have to repeat the first steps. Nice one. Now on to the next step. Now. Great. Time to coat the sample. Nice. Let's see what we have. Ah, I see. I see. Nice one, Harold. That's everything we need. Meet me back at the control room and we can look over the results together. These results... It looks like our catalytic bacteria is starting to have diminishing returns on the energy output. That's not good, right? No, but it also doesn't make much sense. Why would the bacteria have been fine until now? I'm not the best person to ask. What could have changed? I'm not sure. I've run the tests. The key variables, pH level, density, etc., are all stable on the bacteria. We're using the same organic matter for it to convert. And I've been double-checking the filters. They're filtering at the same levels as always. I mean, could something outside the ship be to blame? It is possible that somehow the organic matter is being affected before it hits the filters. But none of the tests we've run on the matter itself shows any key variance. Hmm, strange. Are the energy returns diminishing very badly? I'm not panicking yet, Harold. It's just a trend we can't let continue indefinitely. Unless we can miraculously find a whole new system for producing energy. Not panicking at all. Oh. Oh dear. I should get back to Moreau, but just let me know if there's anything else I could do to help. I'll keep you posted, Harold. And thanks.